والله يدعو إلى دار السلام ويهدي من يشاء إلى صراط مستقيم السلام عليكم peace and welcome to you to our program the beauties of Islam beauties of Islam is a program designed specifically to bring out the beauty and the understanding of what Islam is really all about. My name is Yusuf Estes and for the next few minutes I want to talk a little bit more about the subject that I've been preaching on. <laughs> the subject of the beauties that we find in Islam when we look at it from a different perspective. A human being looks at everything from the human being point of view. You and I are not able to really look at life from the point of view of a blade of grass or a flower or a tree. We can't really know how a tree is looking at everything. But the one who created that tree obviously knows all about it. And who is the creator of everything? And that's what we're talking about now. We're talking about Allah. What is it that the Muslims believe about Allah? What do we understand about Allah? And this is one of the beauties. We understand Allah to be unlike that's the first thing that we're going to say. Allah is unlike. Unlike what? Unlike anything that you're going to be able to describe. Because everything that we are aware of is in the creation. So if the God is in the creation, that means he's created. And the logical question somebody's going to ask you, well, who created God? And then what will be your answer? So the Muslim understands this beautiful concept that God is not in the creation and he is not like the creation. He is outside of his creation in a manner that best suits him being God. One of the things that there's a question that comes up a lot. Can God do anything? Well, for the one who believes in the God, they will say, yeah, he's God. He can do anything he wants to do. A human will naturally attribute that to God because... We're not God. There's a lot of things we can't do. And we want God to be kind of like Superman. He can do anything. You know, he's God, Superman, sort of. But for the Muslim, that doesn't work. Number one, we don't compare God to a man, even Superman. And we don't put God like the creation or in the creation. And then there's another point, too. We know that Allah is not having limits like anything in the creation itself. Who is God? What is God? And this is, like I said, one of the most beautiful concepts that you'll ever imagine. To first begin with what he is not. And this is how he begins. La ilaha illallah. Ante subhanaka in kutumina dalameen. A beautiful statement that was said by one of the prophets. Peace and blessings be upon him. And this is that there is none like Allah to be worshipped. Only Allah is to be worshipped. But then it glorifies in his majesty above all things and says, for sure the wrongdoing is coming from me. A very healthy statement, by the way, for a human being to come to this conclusion. God's perfect and I'm not. But when we talk about God's existence, how do we understand this? And how do we, how do we justify what God does and doesn't do? Can God do anything? Actually, the Muslim is going to say, you're trying to compare Allah to his creation again. What God does and doesn't do. For instance, somebody would say, well, if God can do anything, could he be a man? Right away, the Muslim would say, no. Well, could he lie? No. Could he die? No. Could God uh, cheat? No. These are things that, oh, you're saying bad things about God. So these are things he doesn't do. How do you justify that at the same time you're saying God could do anything well Muslims don't say that we say there is no might there's no power except the might and the power of Allah and we say that this means that Allah is capable of doing whatever he wills to do there's a but look at this but Allah never wills to do something that will make him not be who he is in other words, he would never will to die because he's what? He's al hai which means the eternally alive, which now brings us to another area of beliefs in Islam. And that is that Allah is the epitome of each and every one of his characteristics. 
This is a beautiful teaching. And it's something you really need to reflect on and think about. Because the more you think about this, the more you begin to understand a whole new concept. Something that maybe you never thought about before. Allah says in the Quran, لَيْسَ كَمِتْ لِهِ شَيْئِنْ وَهُوَ سَمِيُّنْ بَصِيرٌ The meaning here is, He is not like anything. And what is this next part? Semyun Basir. means all hearing and all seeing. Even this is not like the creation. Because the creation, there's nothing in creation that can hear everything or see everything, is there? There's nothing in creation that has this kind of ability. And why? Because Allah is not in the creation. These are just a few of the things to give you a little tip of the iceberg. Now what I want to do, I want to let you think about what I'm talking about. So that this steeps in. It's going to take a minute for you. So you just let that seep in there for a minute. Take a break. We're going to come right back. I want to pick up right where I left off and continue with this beautiful concept in Islam. It's the concept of who God is and who he isn't. And all of that's going to be right here. So sit tight. We're going to be right back with more Beauties of Islam. Islam is keeping up the pace. Islam is for every race. back and you're watching Beauties of Islam and we've been talking about the beauty of the concept of God in Islam. And we start, start out by saying what Allah doesn't do, what he isn't. He isn't in his creation, he isn't like his creation. And what does he not do? He doesn't do anything that would make him no longer be who he is. Now he defines himself. This is so interesting because many people they're searching for God. They want to know who is God, where is God, how do I know, what's my purpose, why did he create me? Many questions that we have. But now look what we find in the Quran. It's in chapter 2, verse 255. That would be Surah Baqarah, the chapter called the cow. And look it up if you like and, and see the meaning that's usually translated be something like this. I give you the Arabic and Slowly we'll examine the meaning of it. Allahu la ilaha illahu al-hayu kayum. La ta khuduhu sinatun wa la nom. Lahu ma fis samawati wa ma fil ard. Manda la di yashfu'u induhu illa bidni. Ya lamu ma bayna aidihim wa ma khafuhum. Wallahu hituna bi shayim min ilmihi illa bi mishah. وَاسِيَ كُرْسِيُهُ السَّمَوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ وَلَا يَأُورُهُ هِفْتَهُمَ وَهُولَ لِيُ الْعَدِيمِ You cannot translate this to the English language word for word and really still get this beautiful meaning. But we're going to try anyway. Allah starts out telling you again. Allahu la ilaha illahu. He says Allah, He is the one that there is none other to worship. He's the only one worthy of any worship. Al-Hay. Al-Qayyum. Al-Hay means the eternally and always living. Al-Qayyum. The eternally and always self-subsisting. It means he can't die because he's always alive. And he doesn't ever need anything from his creation because he's totally independent of his creation. He doesn't need anything. These are two very important characteristics and he is the epitome of those. It's, these are eternal and total capacities that only Allah can be uh, have ascribed to him. And then he continues and he says in here that all he doesn't get tired. 
and he doesn't get sinatun wala nom, and he doesn't sleep. These are human attributes. These are creation things like animals and people, and, but not Allah. He doesn't get weary. He doesn't fall asleep. And look at this. And then he said, everything in the universe belongs to him. Totally and completely. It all belongs to him. Then he asked a rhetorical question. Who is there that could come between him and his creation except that he has to give him permission to do it anyway? And then he says that he has full and total knowledge of the whole entire universe. And you don't have any knowledge I don't have any knowledge except what he gives us. And by the way, he can take it away from us too, can't he? Then he says that his cursey extends over the universe. His cursey. And this cursey is sometimes translated as chair. I'm sitting in a cursey right now. It's translated as chair, but actually it can be also like a stool. And this stool is in front of Allah's arsh, his throne. In the same way, in same size proportion as a ring thrown into the desert. This is to give you the idea of how huge and amazing is this cursey. It's bigger than the whole universe. The universe becomes like a tiny ring and the cursey like a giant desert. Then the comparison from Allah's cursey to his throne again. Now suddenly the cursey is the tiny ring and the throne is the giant desert. Now this proportion thing is important because the next part it comes up and it says how mighty and how majestic and how amazing is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is something uh, I, I really <laughs> invite you to learn about the Arabic language and then learn about this verse. It's called Ayatul Kursi, the verse of the chair. Not throne. Arsh is throne. From this, we're able to gain at least an introduction to the understanding of the beauty of the meaning of the word Allah. The word Allah. You know, we could have a whole program just talking about this word Allah. So amazing is this concept. But let us continue with what we were saying earlier. What it is Allah doesn't do, if you said, could he die? Absolutely, he doesn't do that because he is the all alive. That's one of his attributes, his characters. It's one of his 99 names, as we call it, as Muslims. And as far as could he lie or could he cheat? Well, two of his names are Al-Haq, which is absolute truth. He is truth. It doesn't mean he's truthful. He is truth. So obviously, there can't be anything as a lie or anything deceptive. Also, he's adil, which is meaning totally fair and just. Therefore, he could never cheat, and he wouldn't. And when you start to talk about some of the things that, about Allah, and you're comparing him to the creation, this will boggle your mind, and it makes people nuts. I'll give you the example. If somebody say, can Allah do anything? God, can he do anything? And somebody will say, yeah, why not? And then they'll say, can he make a rock so big that nothing can move it? And, uh, yeah, sure, why not? He can make a rock so big nothing can move it. But now you're going to have a problem. Because if he can't move it, that's something he can't do. And how will you answer that? What the Muslim will say is, Allah doesn't make stuff like humans do, and he doesn't move stuff like humans do. He can make a rock so big that nothing in the creation can ever move it. But for him, everything is by command. He says, kun fayakun, be and it is. And that's when the rock takes form and shape. And when he says move, it moves. And he doesn't move things like you and I with a fulcrum and a lever and a mass and a... Eh, eh, eh. No. This is something for Allah that he does as he wills. And he is capable of doing whatever he wills to do. So don't compare him to the creation. You don't get in a problem like that. And don't put him in the creation. And you don't run into these problems in concept. Allah is mighty and above all that he's created. A beautiful concept, a beautiful teaching in Islam. And for more about that, visit our website, beautiesofislam.com. And until next time, peace. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Islam is peace.